I am so delighted to be here. I always enjoy my times in Brazil because of passion, and I notice you always include music with your events. Music has been a big part of my life. I listen to songs, I listen to words, and they are like quotes of famous people, like poetry, lines that you live your life by, lines that set your values. The day that I met Steve Jobs, I, he was very young, and he did not have record albums, so I brought him to my house, and I showed him all the Bob Dylan albums, all the liner notes, all the lyrics to the songs, and that started a friendship of ours. We did a lot of music together, fun, pranks, concerts, the things that young people do. When we started Apple, I'm glad to start with a joke, right? When we started Apple, we wanted to make the world, make people who were limited have more ability. We wanted to make the disadvantaged people, like the blind people, be equivalent to those who had sight. Looking back after all these decades, we succeeded. Because everywhere you go, people are blind <laughs> to the world. I can start with a joke. I get behind the, starting the company. Really, it's, it started with a one great product, which I had done all on my own. Steve Jobs wasn't even around and didn't know about it. And it was going to be all of our revenues for the first 10 years. But what was the, and what was the driving motivation? Driving motivation was you had to be smart enough to be able to build a computer, hardware, software, everything, all on your own. And strange situations in my life that made me that way. But also you had to have a want, a desire, a passion. That was more important. I had decided when I was 10 years old that my passion would be computers, even though there were no books in the bookstores, no magazines, no way to learn about them. I stumbled on it by accident, going to be my passion, something I care about and want. I told my father in high school, after I taught myself how to design computers on paper, what parts would make computers, I got very good at it and I told my father, someday I will have a 4K computer. 4K was enough to do useful things. And my father said, it cost as much as a house. <laughs> And I was stunned, I was young, and I said, I'll live in an apartment. <laughs> I will find a way to have my own computer. Eventually, because of my brilliance with electronics, working on the hottest products of the day, the top products, like the smartphones of today, I was working for Hewlett Packard on some handheld calculators. I was aware of all of the building pieces, the parts that could make computers, and in one night, at a, at a club that was starting up, became the Homebrew Computer Club. In the first meeting, I got the formula came into my head of how to build a useful computer at a good price, a computer that a human could use. And ever since then, I've been so concerned about the humans being empowered, living human life, not having to live a technology life, not having the technology as our master but using the technology to be more masters of our own lives and the world. How do we do things in human ways? To this day, I don't really like, I, I was an engineer, and I lived in a structured world of hundreds and hundreds of little pieces fitting together. That was my job, but today I don't want that kind of structure. I don't want to memorize where to tap things on a phone. I just want to speak a thought and have things happen in that part of my life. I just want to handwrite with my own muscles and have it, the machine understand what I'm talking about. And that's a fight that we've still got ongoing for the future. Every step of the way from the start of personal computers to today, it was spurred by Moore's Law. Now we can make 10 billion transistors for the price when I was a young child, you could make one transistor. The price. It just, it just increased so much we never realized that the transistor is an electronic neuron that's what makes our machines smart. And so I was lucky to be a part of this growing revolution, but, um, but in the end I always compare it to the human brain. The computer, no matter how fast you can make it, cannot tell itself what problems to solve or how to solve them. Once it knows one tiny little thing, the game of Go, the game of chess, 
other things like that, medical advice. Once it studies everything in the world, it can be very faster than, much faster than a human at that. Every step of the way in our development, we got our machines got smaller and smaller, more personal, more portable, more usable, better input, output. Better displays that seem more like real life than cartoons that we started with. And today we're up to vertical reality where visual, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, yes, virtual reality where everywhere you look you have a high quality, realistic, like real life. And that's human, real life. I always want the computer, the human to be more important than the technology. We're going to proceed now to a question answer session with some prepared questions and you'll get your chance at the end of it. So I'd like to invite my, good, there we go. Opa. Oh, aí, agora sim. A gente tem, por favor, uma salva de palmas para essa introdução.